Welcome back to Top Talk TV, where everything comes off the top. Today we're going to do a reaction to how the universe is way bigger than you think. And I think it would be pretty interesting to see, get an idea on how small we really are. Right. You ready, sis? I am. Let's do it. Let's I'm do interested. this. This is a real-life lore video made possible by Squarespace. Make your next move with a beautiful website from Squarespace. This is Earth. You live here on this planet somewhere, and everything that you've ever known is located right here. But just how small exactly is Earth when compared to the scale of the entire universe? Let's start by zooming out to where we can see our nearest cosmic neighbor, the moon. You may think that the moon is very close to Earth since it dominates our night skies, but in reality the moon isn't this close to our planet, it's actually about this far away, 384,400 kilometers away from you right now on average. You could fit 30 entire Earths in between this distance, and if you somehow were able to drive a car at a constant 100 kilometers per hour speed, it would take you about 160 days to drive the entire yeah. distance. Despite this incredible distance, however, 12 humans have actually set foot here, representing the furthest away that any individual human has ever been away from the Earth, and one of humanity's greatest achievements. This is what the Earth would look like from there if you were standing there with them. And if you wanted to communicate with somebody back at home, it would take a message about two and a half seconds to travel between you and them since that's how fast the speed of light can travel at. This is a photo that was taken on Mars, and that tiny dot that you see there is Earth as seen from the Martian surface. On average, Mars is an incredible 225 million kilometers away from Earth, but that distance can be as high as 401 million kilometers. That means that whenever humanity finally gets around to landing a human on the planet, that person will be 986 times further away from Earth than the astronauts who landed on the moon were. In addition, the time delay for sending a message from Mars back to Earth isn't just two and a half seconds, it's actually more like 20 minutes each direction, which would render instant communication in the event of an emergency impossible. When we zoom out even further away, we can find the Voyager 1 space probe, which is the furthest away man-made object from Earth. It is currently located 138 AUs from the Earth, AU meaning astronomical unit, which is the distance between the Earth and the Sun, which means that Voyager 1 is 138 times further away from us than the Sun is. At some point on its long voyage, Voyager 1 turned its camera around and took this photograph. It may not look like much at first, but in my opinion, this is the greatest single photograph ever taken in all of human history. This tiny, pale blue dot is Earth, and I don't think that anybody has ever said something as amazing about this as Carl Sagan when he said, If you look at it, you see a dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever lived, lived out their lives. The aggregate of all our joys and sufferings. Thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines. Every hunter and every forager. Every hero and coward. Every creator and destroyer of civilizations. Every king and every peasant. Every young couple in love. Every hopeful child. Every mother and every father. Every inventor and explorer. Every teacher of morals every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there, on a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. Voyager 1 is currently traveling at 17 kilometers every single second, but even at that speed, it won't break out of the reach of our solar system for another 30,000 years. Once we go beyond the solar system, we arrive in our interstellar neighborhood. Here we shift to the light year unit of measurement, which is the distance that light travels in a full Earth year, or about 9.461 trillion kilometers. The star Proxima Centauri here is the closest other star to us other than our sun, but it's still 4.24 light years away from us. To put that into perspective, if it was heading in the right direction, it would still take Voyager 1 over 70,000 years to reach it. In other words, if you drove your car at 100 kilometers an hour like in our previous example to the moon, it would take over six times longer than the entire age of the universe is just to finally get there, and it wouldn't even exist still when you arrive. When we zoom 
zoom out even further, we can see the entire Milky Way galaxy, inside of which Earth is located right here. This yellow dot is the furthest extent of humanity's radio broadcasts throughout history, which means that any possible aliens who live outside of this range are totally unaware of humanity's presence. It's complete silence outside of this yellow dot as far as we are currently aware, but the entire galaxy spans over 100,000 light years from end to end. There are over 100 billion stars and over 100 billion planets inside of our galaxy. But you have never seen the full glory of the galaxy at night, because 99% of the stars that you can see with the naked eye are limited to this small, tiny region right here. But even this massive galaxy is nothing compared to the rest of what's out there. Zooming out even further and we arrive at the local group of galaxies, a collection of 54 different galaxies that is about 10 million light years across. But zooming out even further and we can see the Virgo supercluster, of which the local group here is just a tiny segment of. There are at least 100 other groups of galaxies just like our own local group inside of here, and the distance from one side to the other is a mind-numbing 110 million light years. But even the massive Virgo supercluster is nothing but a quiet and tiny lobe of the great Laniatea supercluster, an enormous structure that is home to our galaxy as well as 100,000 other galaxies. The distance from one side to the other is 520 million light years, but from even there we can zoom out all the way to the entire observable universe and see that even the titanic Laniakea supercluster is just a tiny and insignificant part of everything. Hmm. This is the observable universe, and it contains everything that we know of. It is home to at least two trillion different and individual galaxies, which together contain more stars than there are grains of sand on the entire Earth. The distance from Earth to any side of the observable universe is 46.5 billion light years, which means that the entire width is 93 billion light years across. What's perhaps even more interesting, however, Observer. is what actually lies beyond the observable universe. Right. Keep in mind that the observable universe is all that we can currently see, and it's entirely possible that the rest of the universe outside of it is vastly larger and more fantastic than we can possibly ever imagine. We simply don't know what else is out there, because the light from these incredibly distant places has not yet had enough time in the universe's history to reach us yet back on Earth. And the light from some places may never reach us at all. Because some parts of space very far away from Earth are expanding away from us faster than the speed of light, that means that the light from these places will never, in an infinite amount of time, reach Earth. Mm. Meaning that even if humanity is eternal and exists forever, there will still be an unknown number of places in the universe that we will never know about or ever see. So, it is very likely that as unbelievably enormous as it seems, the observable universe is just a tiny slice of what we can currently see of the entire universe. According to the theory of cosmic inflation that was proposed by Dr. Alan Guth, if it is assumed that cosmic inflation began at 10 to the negative 37th of a second after the Big Bang, and with the assumption that the size of the universe before inflation began was equal to its age times the speed of light, then this would seem to suggest that at the present day, the entire universe is 150 sextillion oh. times larger than the observable universe. That number for reference looks like this, with this many zeros. Let this number sink in for just a moment. This would be similar to you thinking that the entire observable universe, everything that you could see, was the size of a light bulb, but then realizing that in reality the entire universe is larger than the former planet of Pluto. Imagine a light bulb in the center of Pluto, but we inside the light bulb were totally unaware that Pluto existed outside of it, and that's a similar situation to this. We are all so unbelievably small, but you shouldn't worry, because all that means is that there is so much left out there for us to discover together. This video Whoa. was made possible by Squarespace. If you're one... Whoa. <laughs> I'm give, me the woes. give me the woes. Give me the woes. Give me the woes. I'm tripping because, like, just think of, like, how an ant would feel to us. In its world, it's, it can travel and do all the things that it does, 
but to in our scale, my goodness. We, we're even smaller than that to add our giants compared to what we are to, I guess, the observable universe and the universe as a whole. We'll probably never get to discover how big it actually is, so. For me, I want to know, like, it raised more questions. Like, I want to know how they were able to get that far out into the galaxy and then even have the theory Telescopes. Uh, build the theory that they did to see that there's stuff that we still can't see. Telescopes. Because but telescopes uh, and what? Like the rays of light that comes that yeah. you know that that we have. Because light travels at a certain speed uh -huh. and it takes life a certain like what he said about if you were in the car and you tried to travel to Alpha Centauri, it'll take you so many years to get there and by the time you even get there, it won't be there anymore. Because what we were seeing was just the light that came from it. Right. So we'll never, if you ever tried to travel to it, you would have to build some kind of ship or something that can travel faster than light. And they say you can't travel faster than light. But obviously, things can move faster than uh, light. Then what about beyond the universe that we can't see? He just said uh, in that in that little framework there of the observable universe, that's all we can see now with all our greatest powerful telescopes or whatever. We can only see this much. Right. And he's talking about what's going on outside around and that. That light is never going to reach us ever. But how do they know that that exists if it doesn't reach us? If we can't see it. We can't you see it. You don't know. Right. So how... You would never know because... So uh, it's just a hypothetical intellectual theory. Going from, going from how they did their calculations to see the observable universe, mm -hmm. I think uh, they're going on some of those calculations, and if they expand it more, they're saying that's how they came up with their hypothesis of how that light. And they know it takes a certain amount of time for the light in the observable universe to even reach us. Right. And we, we, can, we really can't see it on Earth. That's why we send satellites and telescopes up into the atmosphere mm -hmm. so they can not be blocked by that. I guess our blurry, you know, because we got an atmosphere and everything, so you got to get outside the atmosphere to see even further. And, man, we are, like you said, insignificantly small. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's going to be like many, many, many hundreds of, if, if Earth lives long enough and humans be around, they don't kill each other off or poison themselves off on this planet, it'll take so many, many lifetimes to figure out even more that's outside the observable universe. But this puts a lot of things into perspective because you know how a lot of people uh, like believe in God and have their own like little rituals or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's a trip. It's a trip because... So what you, which, I mean, what you're saying though, like, is, is science disproving the belief of God? No. Or is it a reflection of it? You can believe whatever you believe. If that, if that makes you feel right within your existence, you're probably not going to live to like 150 years old. So whatever you live in those times that, that you live in, you're going to believe what you believe. If you believe the center in God, more power to you. More power to you, you know. Um, I'm not one of those people. I believe uh, life is just infinite. It just goes on and on and on, and we're just like a small little blip of what they say mm. we've been here, what, at most 200,000 years on this planet, humans as we could are ourselves now, maybe about 200,000 years. So there's much time that went on way before that, and the Earth is supposed to be like 4 billion years old, so... Time. Time. It's the thing that uh, time and space, because they work together. Space and time work together, so it can go on infinitely. And our little comprehension of our little human minds will probably never comprehend all the things that are out there. Uh, we can see a lot that's in our little local area, not just saying our, the observable universe, because that's super huge compared to what we can see now. Right. So, man, this is just amazing how these scientists take time to spend their lives to teach us humans a little bit more about our place in this existence. And it's a trip. How long 
are we going to ever last? It's just amazing to me. Yeah, you know, and thanks, bro, for sharing this with me because I'm just taking it all in, dig digesting it, because I'm not aware of, you know, our universe and our space outside of the Earth and space. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, just to, but it also helps me to understand why we are trying to um, travel to Mars and to get to these places yeah. bit by bit, bit by bit, bit by bit. So the next, or the person that comes after uh, the Elon Musk is going to be the person to take us to that A next planet, further. to that next yeah. universe, that next year. So I guess the frontier begins, huh? It's really yeah. Be like Star Trek. That's kind of like when he was saying, like, the observable universe is being that light bulb. Right. And all we can see was what's inside that light bulb, not knowing that light bulb is sitting on, like, Pluto. Just imagine, like, say, uh, a flea or something crawling through a crevice of an elephant. They see that, they feel all that stuff that they can see, but if they zoomed back, they would actually see the elephant. We don't know if we're living in mm. on some kind of little thing either. We we can just observe what we observe. But what if the universe is just I don't know, like say a giant tick and we're a smaller, even significant thing in that. So I don't know. No, you it's just do. Great. I mean I, we need to do some more of these because I actually like this. Um and now we can have to figure out how to get to outer space so we can do our channel there. Yeah, I don't think it. we can live long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, Thank folks. Thank you guys for tuning in. <laughs> Top Talk TV. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. All right. And we'll catch y'all next time. And if you guys have any suggestions for other um, shows or space um, shows like this that you want us to watch and tune into and review, please let us know uh, in the comments below because I like to learn. This is something that was new to me. So now I have to do some research outside of this and I would like to know, uh, we would like to know what you guys yeah. are into. All right. Please share, like, subscribe, comment below. Top Talk TV. Peace. Peace, y'all.